This is the Wizard WZRD Chicago 88.3 FM. We have with us today Senna Alinko of Progressive Minds. Welcome to Wizard. Thank you so Senna. much. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to your audience. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about uh, Progressive Minds. Okay, so I like to call it the Progressive Mind Show. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the, no, it's a progress. It's a radio. It was. A, it is a radio show that started uh, sometime um, getting to the end of 2017, and it's been on the air uh, for about two and a half years. So the Progressive Mind Show started when um, a friend of mine called Black Jesus invited me to. Uh, a Ghanaian radio station on the north side called WG, it's, uh, WGHC 98.3 FM. And so when I got there, uh, we started talking about community stuff, you know, and then um, my interest and my passion for community development has always been there. And But I never thought of, you know, going on air and being a radio show, a radio show host or anything of the sort. But I always liked, liked people and liked to see people do well, community do well and strive and all that. So when, when I was, so I was being a guest on that radio station for a while on my friend's radio station, I mean radio show, which is uh, the Black Jesus that I mentioned. And then, um, so gradually, whilst I kept going there, the, the extreme desire to impact even uh, on a larger scale started developing. And so I thought of a name for it. Now, mind you, I've never been to a journalism school or so I'm not a journalist. And so, um, but the show that I was on, we were speaking local dialect. And so I thought, how can I reach the local, the bigger, ma the bigger community um, in, in the way that I want to? So, and I couldn't do that by speaking local dialect. And so I thought of a show that, of course, I can communicate in English so it can benefit uh, more people. So I came up with a name, to Progressive Minds, because that's how, that's who I am. You know, that's how I like to think about life. That's how I like to think about people. That's how I like to think about community. And so I, th I thought it were two things that came to mind, positive vibes or Progressive Minds. But then I decided on Progressive Minds. And then, of course, the radio show, too. So I had a show to it. So it is the Progressive Minds show. How did you start in community advocacy? And how did that lead up to uh, Progressive Minds show? Right. So I have always been, like I said, doing that even when I was in Ghana. I'm originally from Ghana. And um, for about seven to eight years, when I, f when I completed high school back home, a friend, a friend of mine who was called Pucho, um, we started doing what we call Save the Dance. Save the Dance is the name of the, the I'll say, annual event. But the content uh, is we would bring all, almost all the high school schools in Ghana um, and engage them in a dance and competition. Now, we were using that as a platform to promote health awareness, such as uh, staying away from HIV mm -hmm. and then um, uh, the and then the and then keeping the environment clean to prevent malaria because you know that is a prevalent health situation mm -hmm. back in Ghana, mm -hmm. and so we were doing that every year. And the goal again was to sensitize the youth, you know, about the the um, the dangers of HIV and staying away from it. And then of course uh, malaria, as I said, and also giving the curious. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that uh, you're passionate about the work. Did you mm. have any numbers about uh, uh, what the, the positive of, of effects of your work, uh, mm. like the deaths and the uh, um, uh, spread of the yeah, spread of malaria, uh -huh. HIV, mm -hmm. uh, before mm -hmm. versus after you started your work. A good, good question. Now we didn't because I mean, mind you, we were we were young, you know, what you know, you know, now we were in our teens, and you know, I was more passionate about the work. Mm -hmm. And we thought it was fun for the kids, for the, for, the, for the students. And secondly, we thought it was very educational. Again, the purpose of the, the Save the Dance is what we were mainly concerned about. Mm -hmm. So we were not paying attention to the data. Even though we're working with uh, the government health institutions, some of the government health institutions, we were not going to them to kind of track data. And, my, and, and another thing is, it's always difficult tracking data or getting data in third world countries you know uh we don't it's, it's difficult and it's difficult in the first place to track that and mm -hmm. secondly we were not even thinking about that we were just about the work you know even if, even as young as we were then and so yes i cannot give you numbers yeah. but i can tell you that that 
if you call Ghana now and you ask of Save the Dance, it's one of the biggest events. Um, and I know that the numbers kept increasing year after year. So you initiated in terms of people, in terms of participation, mm-hmm. and uh. you have uh, people uh, actually continuing it for you. Yeah, I mean, yes, I, my friend of mine, we just it was just the two of us. His name is uh, he has actually has a radio show now on uh, it's called Hits FM. He's on Hits FM in Ghana, Accra, one of the biggest radio stations, and he is the one. He's still he's still running that event. Um, it, so it was just the two of us, and so when I migrated here, of course, he kept going. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it's yeah, it's still it's a long going, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So from that to what? So I uh, yeah, uh, from from there, then I migrated here. Some somewhere two thousand eight, uh, came to do my masters. Um, after completing my bachelor's in Ghana, I decided I always thought to uh, enhance and broaden my scope and my horizon about the world. And the best place I felt to do that is the U.S. So I always wished to come to the U.S. After spending all my life in Ghana and going to school and everything, I wanted to get a higher education and higher perspective to life. And I always dreamt of doing that in the U.S. And so when the opportunity came for me to migrate here, of course, I came and did my MBA. um, uh, And then I went on to work, got married, then got divorced and all that. But, um, but yeah, I have enjoyed the, 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 the transition coming from Ghana here, of course, the cultural shock, the, the learning curve, the processes, and even the, po- the procedures, how things are done, the systems, and how, I mean, the, syst- the efficacy of the systems here. Um, I feel like it has given me a lot of experience, a lot of impact, uh, a lot of uh, exposure to, uh, I would say, uh, a more uh, efficient way and proper way of developing communities, helping people and developing people even better than what I used to do back home. How did you start community advocacy in the States then? So uh, in the States, I, I immediately got involved with a church. The, um, there's a church in uh, Naperville called Calvary. Uh, Calvary. Mm-hmm. So I started um, attending that church, and at Calvary, I got involved with the youth ministry. And so uh, it's called the, uh, I think, the next Next, uh, something next. I've forgotten the actual name, but that's okay. yeah, led by Pastor Steve. Then I don't know if it's still the youth pastor, but Calvary in Naperville is where my I would say my youth advocacy or my community advocacy started actually. Because, um, now I'm a Christian, so I would rather want to be in the main auditorium, listen, listen to the word of God, but my passion for people and again, the youth and community, so it kind of drove me. And unknowingly, to the, I found myself at the youth uh, section where I was missing the word and the message every Sunday at the main auditorium because I had to be with the kids and, you know, help them out and, and teach them the word of God and whatnot. And so even though I was missing out on that, I, I, you know, I was getting joy by helping, you know, out with the kids. Mm-hmm. We, we had a program called, I mean, they have a program with the youth called Breakaway. So we would take them to, let's say, Wisconsin and, you know, for camping and help them, I mean, you know, be with them while they learn the Word of God and learn, cult, um, uh, what do you call them, some, some, I mean, they, they would have games, right? They would have games. They would have certain um, uh, community projects and whatnot. Sometimes we would go to. Sometimes we would take the youth to the street. I mean, we'll go out into the into the communities and do what we call street uh, cleaning, like community cleaning. Mm-hmm. So we'll go on the streets and pick up litters and make sure that we are keeping the community clean and whatnot. So we engage the youth in these types of. Community activities. That was with the ministry, right? That was with the ministry, okay, a recovery. Uh, yeah, and then um, how did you set off on your own? What did you find in the ministry that, uh, that was lacking so that you uh, could step in to work on your own? Right. So the ministry was fine. There was nothing wrong with it, but I had to. I had to move to the city. Okay. So for you know, to, so I can be in, uh, be close to school. So whilst I was in school, um, with you know, whilst I was in grad school, um. I uh, grad school, uh, Argos University, and so um, I later on after school I joined uh, Assemblies of God Church, mm-hmm. uh, and it's right here actually down the street uh, in this community. Mm-hmm. And there I started. Before then, I'm, I'm a soccer pa- uh, soccer fanatic, right? I love soccer, and so I would kind of kind of bring trying to uh, organize my community uh, to engage in soccer and sports activities. But then I took it to the next level where I was organizing the the youth in my church. 
and some of the youth in the community mm -hmm. to form a soccer team. Mm -hmm. So we call it um, uh, Christ, uh, Christ, no, uh, Men of Hope. Men of Hope soccer team. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a soccer team that I created at um, uh, Christ Center of Hope Assemblies of God Church. Mm -hmm. And so this Men of Hope um, soccer team consisted of some of the youth in the church and, of course, youth um, you know, in the community in general. Mm -hmm. The goal was to use soccer uh, to get the youth together and to also um, inculcate in them the values of sharing teamwork and also intercultural and building that intercultural relationship you know sensitizing them of the diverse community that we live in so that our team did not sometimes we would play soccer games or matches and we would have all type of races in the team so it wasn't just a Ghanaian or an african team you would have everybody from the walks of life caucasian asians indians you know in that team playing other teams you know so it what, went what, on where did those other teams come from uh, also from churches community? yes or yes what? sometimes some of them were from churches um um we would had pentecost church we'll have methodist church we'll have presby church and then sometimes we'll have other community soccer teams who do not necessarily belong to a church mm -hmm. and w some of these games would happen at uh wilson and lakeshore soccer turf mm -hmm. sometimes we'll have it uh by stony island and uh 61st uh, who, who was in the charge of coordinating who plays against whom oh so it was me uh there was a guy his name is uh uh ebenezer ankara he now he he was at Pentecost. Um, he still uh, yeah he was at Pentecost here in Chicago. Um, he lived in Chicago, but he moved his family to uh, Texas. And there's another guy called um, forgotten his name. I think uh, is it Eric or. How forgot this you, thing. What was the next step then after oh. all these uh, soccer uh, games? Uh, yeah, so 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 after you know this the soccer games matches um, of evolved. Sometimes we'll go to Ohio, mm -hmm. you know, and play other soccer teams there. Um, so after that, um, I think um, it, I did other community engagement, like you know, organize health. Um, uh, health awareness, you know, events. So and you basically have done your work in Ghana then? No, 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 here. I know that. Uh -huh. Yes, I know. Mm. I know that you started the uh, health... health uh, yeah, I continued part of... I continued, yeah, I was doing that kind of... I was doing some type of health... Uh, uh, community health promotions here as well mm -hmm. when, I, when I came here, in addition to the soccer thing, okay. right? Because, mm -hmm. again, anything that gave me the chance to be in the community... Where I, I involved myself in it, and then uh, and, so, and so I found myself more uh, towards the soccer and the sports thing, and then health as well. Sometimes uh, the Ghana, Ghana National Council here in Chicago would organize health um, events, health awareness events, and I would be there to support. Sometimes I would organize some myself. Did you find any difficulty in a community involvement mm -hmm. in uh, in the sports, in soccer, mm -hmm. in, in the and in your health events? Yeah, sometimes it's gathering people. You know, um, because of the work schedule, it's far easier in Ghana. But here, you were working, you were a student, and sometimes, so so you have to juggle between all that. So getting people, and then and then because we are very scattered, you know, some people on the north, south, east, and what in uh, suburb and all, all that. So so the difficulty is getting people to be at the games and other events on time. So you have to coordinate everybody, and you have to be you have to call them sometimes. Um, and mind you, some of the some of the participants are the are youth and they don't drive so you have to literally go to their homes and pick about three or four people from different locations mm -hmm. um and then another difficulty is keeping the um the kids that they used to play because sometimes after playing they take the kids home instead of leaving you know living it with us so we were losing you know uh kids and you have to replace them with your own money and mind you nobody was we weren't getting financial support. This was done, you know, everything was done through, yeah, it was totally voluntary. So we, I had to pay for everything that I needed, that needed to be taken care of out of pocket. And then um, the Church of Pentecost was also supporting by giving, you know, um, some donations for some of the things that we're doing. So the difficulty is organize, getting the people to participate. Yes. What about practice? Uh, because you oh, yes. jump into the game yes. and I, uh, play. Yes, that's another difficult thing. But, uh, you know, we were persistent, so we I strategically put practice on Sundays. Uh, usually, most of us go to church on Sunday. So, and after after church is easy. What are the best times on Sunday, and what are the best times for the game? Um, right after, let's say between two to five p.m. Mm -hmm. That's when that. 
which I discovered that was the best time to get the youth and get people to play. More so, uh, you mean on Sunday for the practice? Yes, for the practice. Mm -hmm. And then even for the games, we we, we did play on Sundays oh, okay. because get, it, it was major. The major tournaments that we we'll play were on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I take that back. Or on Saturdays because you know. We put the word out there that on this day, so the kids, they, they, they save the date, you know. So Saturday we meet and they're like, we spend the whole day there. Uh, there are trophies, there, there's food, you know. And, and so major, major, major game to tournaments were played on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. But sometimes uh, m practice were mainly done on Sundays. Mm -hmm. And then some of the tournaments we would play uh, on Sundays. But ma major tournaments were on Saturdays. So what is your, what was your next step after the uh, soccer and uh, the, the health events? What, what how how did your community advocacy progress? Progress right. So um, so yeah. Uh, in course of time. Um, again, due to what I do and how I relate to people, as I mentioned, my friend Black Jesus called me one time that there was a radio station that had opened on the north side. Mm -hmm. So I went there and um, I you know fell in love with it. Um, it was at the time. Um, I mean, he called me and said, hey, there's this Ghanaian radio station that has that WGHC. So I went there, like I said, discovered, and I realized that it was a great project. So I f fell in love with it. I, I was a guest on his show. We, you know, had a great show in the uh, in the Ghana dialect. In, it's, it's a it's a local tribe tribe in Ghana. I mean, it's a tribe in Ghana. Okay. So it wasn't in uh, English. It uh, wasn't. Yes, my first, second. I'll say the first three weeks or month. It wasn't in English. I was a guest speaking in a Ghana language. Mm -hmm. You know, a Ghana language is one of the dialects. Our yeah, dialect I would say in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so it was. You know, and then there are communities here who speak the dialect. So, um, so yeah, we we had fun with it. You know, we talking. How far is the audience reach for WGHC? WGHC is a hundred by hundred. Uh, so and but it's, it also streams online. So it doesn't matter where you are. People from Africa here, the diaspora, Ghanaians in the diaspora. You know, we were reaching out to them, and and so um, yeah, based typically Ghanaians in the diaspora and also in Ghana. Are the shows archived? Could the listeners mm -hmm. access those shows? Yes, when we started, uh, we weren't archiving the the but so the Akaka show, which is the Ghana show, it wasn't necessarily archived at the time. But when I started the Progressive Mind show, mind you, I told you that I felt like. Like I had more to give than uh, because I was a guest, but then uh, something in me, something, something that had been in me for a long time started developing, and I feel like if I have the mic, I think I can have a bigger effect than speaking the local dialect to a, a, a certain group of people from Ghana, mm -hmm. and so it sparked the interest, of course, and I guess started thinking about the name to give to it, but I decided to give it. The progressive minds because i feel like th this is who i am and i want to impact the community the way i think and i also want to be able to attract like-minded people who are progressive in their thinking and who have positive attitudes because for me i wanted to spark positive attitudes in people when i get on the air that was my vision and so i i told god that if i have to go on air. If I have to do this show, uh, my prayer is that, or my go my prayer and my goal is that I want at least a person or one or two individuals' minds and hearts to be changed positively after I get off air. So that has been my focus. Do you have any numbers at all or any feedback mm. from the audience about how you have changed their lives? Oh, yes. Um, so we, had, we even had students listening to it. Um, I had a professor from Kennedy King uh, who had a class? Who had her class listen to my show as their coursework? You know, so they will listen, and the feedback was tremendous because some of the students, I called, some of the students actually came to intern at the end of the day with me, and others would call into uh, call me later and tell me how their lives had changed because proud to listen to the show. Um, some of the people, some of the students were very had a timid attitude due to their you know due to their history and whatnot. And my show actually gives them the confidence to speak and to become more aware of themselves, to become more, uh, to discover their power and their identity, you know. So the show gave them that. And um, the professor was also giving me feedback on how the show has changed her class. When uh, you say that the students uh, mm -hmm. have 
became more confident mm. in uh, speaking up. Yeah. What do you know? What topics they uh, focused on? Yeah, it was uh, social. I would say uh, social studies and uh, African American history and African history and um, I think more as, and then it was uh, communication too something around communication. I meant uh, uh -huh. when uh, the students start, mm. started uh, having the courage to speak up uh, in their own ways. Yeah. What did they usually speak out about? What would they like before they? Yes. Bef after after <laughs> listening to your show, uh -huh. they became more confident. Oh in yes, speaking. yeah. They started be, they started advocating more for their communities. And then standing up more for themselves, speaking their mind, you know. Again, um, some of these kids had had very, um, I would say, um, hard upbringing. And so the, what do you call it, the, um, the trauma, the trauma that they go through, mm -hmm. through uh, due to their circumstances, you know. And I had that problem too. Uh, before I came to America, I... I had I had issues speaking my mind and you know talking about things that I care about because of my upbringing, you know. Um, okay, then for you, mm -hmm. what was the turning point that you uh, felt that you could speak up for yourself? America, I mean, the, just being America, just just yeah, just being in the country and learning that, um, learning that you don't have to be afraid of what you think and how you feel, and you see the system gives you the confidence to speak your mind that it's okay. That you can speak your mind, and whatever you have in your head is not dumb, it's not stupid. That everybody has something um, that they can contribute positively to their society, and so you don't you don't even have to go to school to learn that. Once you come into the country and you live in it for a while, you learn that the system is just designed that way. You see what I'm saying? It seems as if uh, there are some people that are not that comfortable with uh, speaking up for themselves. So there has to be some kind of epiphany or turning point mm. that would uh, activate uh, your speaking up mm. for yourself and mm. uh, the uh, right. more timid students. At least uh, mm. you you uh, spark that uh, fire in them to right. speak up for themselves. Yeah, exactly. And then apart from that, they had had so many many uh, positive feedback. You know. My mom, for instance, her perspective to life and certain things in our community changed. She would always call me and tell me how my show has changed her and how my show has taught her a lot. That's my mom, you know, and my my siblings and friends. Like, people will call me and tell me, look, bro, sometimes they will not call into the show, but they will call me and say, look, you are impacting you are impacting our community a lot from by you know from your show and the the people you bring on your show and the topics and the topics that you discuss on your show and how their their mindset and their hearts towards even certain groups of people in our community has evolved you know and and I so I I, I my confidence grew show after show because people would let me know. Sometimes even when I come on when I come on set and I finish my show, I'll be like, "Oh man, I should have spoken what about are the this." Topics that uh, encourage the best feedback. What what did the, you said that there were oh, the yeah. topics that uh, were on your show? Or what were the most popular topics? Oh man, I, oh yeah. So I had when I I discussed shows uh, to when I spoke about Africans and African Americans, the the gap between African Americans, uh, it sparked a lot of. Uh, positive feedback mm -hmm. um the gap between african americans and what and africans oh, okay yeah there's I the see. there's a kind of barrier um this i mean we all have one heritage which is what we might go into um uh, which is the, why we are doing the exchange but there is um we we are one people the african heritage um but the, we are in the diaspora we live as three major separate communities that's how it seems and we don't we don't see we don't what are, what are the three communities i'll say the african community the african-american community and the caribbean community okay so i t and uh, to some extent the afro-latina community too belong to the african uh, heritage but y there's, there's a clear disparity among these communities uh, and if you if you belong to it you know and you see it what is the disparity uh, what does it arise from the culture or what yeah, i think i think due to middle pass separation um now before bef no this is this is the 400 years of yeah, when the first slave got into america and uh, uh and i feel like before that we were people that 
a shared peace and unity. Uh, but of course, once we got separated and it went through, you know, South America to the, to, to the Americas, you know, some ended up in Europe and whatnot, mm -hmm. uh, the cultures, you know, evolved and changed. Mm -hmm. So we became different, you know, we, we developed different attitudes, different cultures, right? Um, but if you look carefully, the reason why you can, I'm not, I'm not going to give a lot of examples, but look at the way Caribbeans cook. Look at their dish. Compare it to the Africans' dish. Go to African restaurant, go to Caribbean restaurant, and we go to Mexican, Latinas uh, restaurant. Same concept. Mm. When you look at their, their dish, you know, and you taste it, and you look at the way they present it and the ingredients, same concept. Okay. I mean, the Caribbean are similar to the Mexican cuisine. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you look at... So, Caribbeans have the, the beans, you know, the plantain, of course... Uh, and rice, you know, and if and the and the and the spice and the spices they use for their food. Again, if you look at how it's all integrated, it has similar uh, connotation, or it has it has something in similar, right? Um, um, and, and it has something in common. Let me put it that way. And if you compare the Caribbean's way of cooking to the Africans, if you compare the way of life, you know, the the behavior, and if you look at the African, the African Americans have popular and um, one of the uh, popular dishes is what well, soul food and if you see how it's made mm -hmm. and if you look at the content it's just how um africans cook you know um the way they like to spice their their, their chicken you know and though even though africans don't use a lot of barbecue sauce we still use uh, our own kind of sauces but there's a lot of things that um, binds us together. There's a lot of things that makes us similar, uh, but maybe time will not permit us to go into the details. But all I'm saying is that if you belong to that community and anybody's listening to me and they belong to any of these communities, m mainly the African, Caribbean, and African American, you know that we look alike. We act somewhat the same. I mean, we look alike, yeah, but we don't dress the same. We don't talk the same because accents are different and because of our history. And so uh, this that topic really sparked a lot of uh, feed, uh, positive feedback. Um, and then uh, I'm drawing blank now, but I've had shows on uh, respect for women, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, shows on uh, fatherhood um, and singlehood in America, singlehood and the rise of uh, single parenthood in the African West African community. I've had uh, conversations, I have, I have discussions on relationships you know, interracial, intercultural relationships and whatnot. And these conversations just spark like, like all kinds of feedback, you know, mm -hmm. people, because this, these are the things people go through. Mm -hmm. And my show is concerned and is concerned about, my show is embedded in pertinent issues that the everyday people face, community people go through. Wizard is uh, doing a community assessment and mm -hmm. ascertainment mm -hmm. of, uh, their uh, problems, the needs, and their interests for our quarterly issues that we have to submit every quarter to the FCC for mm -hmm. the annual DJs. Okay. For you, mm -hmm. what is the what is your main interest? Like, the, what do you care most about? And later, I'm going to ask you about okay. the about the the community that, that you're involved with. But for you first, I care about people's well-being. Okay. That's that's again. If I'm on radio and I'm doing what I'm doing, it's just because of that. I think seeing people do well, see communities thrive in harmony and communities develop, you know, in the right ways are the things that w wake me up. They're the things that I sleep with. Uh, it actually gives me more satisfaction and joy than my salary, Is uh, to be honest with you. If I can make someone better, if I can make a person smile, you know, so that's 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 why when that's why I do the, sh the shows that I do, as I treat the topics that I treat, that's why I bring the people that I bring on my show. Sometimes I just bring a, a, a local, I mean, someone in the community who is impacting lives. If I see you impacting lives in your own small way, it doesn't matter. If it's three, five people that you are impacting and you are doing it from your heart, I want to promote you. So I, I bring those people, I bring businesses, so and, I wasn't and I wasn't taking money. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So do you have someone who actually impacted about three to five people and you brought on the show? Oh, yeah. Um, Bullet for Life. Uh, there's an, an organization called Bullet for Life. Okay, now this an organi this this organization is their mission. I for, uh, her, the lady who's representing the Chicago um, branch because I think it started in Florida, according to the lady. 
her mission, the one actually her mission, what she does is she goes on the streets of Chicago, mostly the South Side, talk to, and I think she goes to barber shops and go to you know shops and meet people, mm-hmm. and literally convinces them to to give her their bullets, mm. you know, um, so the name of so bullets for life is she takes a bullet from you and the goal is that that one bullet that she's been able to convince you to give to her is a potential lifesaver mm. because if you had that you know the you know it's a, you know so so that is their mission and she does that she literally is on the street of course not talking to everybody on the street but that is her job she goes out there and takes bullets from individuals and they make oh i used to have that bracelet i I gave it to my what? nephew. Uh, no, yeah, a bullet like the the shells. I mean, yes. they, they, of course, they take the the you know yeah, the actual showcasing. the showcase. Yeah, the, the case, right? Mm-hmm. And they make bristlets out of it, okay. um, and and they sell them. Um, and they sell them for cheap, basically. I mean, it's just a way of raising money, you know, for the organization. Mm-hmm. But they make a lot. Of, they have a lot of bracelets, beautiful bracelets. So she was on my show. She gave me one, and I always wore it. But my nephew came home one day. I invite you know they came over, and he said he wanted it, so I gave it to my nephew. So I have to go back to her and get another one but her and uh, another lady called Latanya Johnson she's on um, Latanya Johnson uh, they call her the mother of Inglewood Latanya Johnson would with the whole her own money uh, organize kids in the community provide them with daycare and provide them with uh, resources and make sure that kids that uh, after school but provide them with after school programs you know give them a safe haven for the kids to play study and learn and whatnot um, so she was actually featured on CNN um, uh, what's the name of this guy there was this guy who, who does a show on CNN he goes to communities and um, uh, help people who are impacting their communities. I've forgotten his name. That's okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, Latanya Johnson, um, actually of Bullets for Life, and um, there's a young kid called Joseph Awinyonga. Uh, he is the I think Sith Sith National Boxing Junior Champion. Um, yeah, and he's he's all over. He's, he's a very tremendous um, young kid. But I started showcasing him at the age of nine. He's now eleven. Mm-hmm. When he was nine years, I heard about his exploits, mm-hmm. and I started shining light on him, shining light on him. Um, and of course, now he's been he's met with the mayor, he's met with the governor, he's met with almost like I don't know who else. He he met with the uh, uh, chief of Chica- uh, Chicago police, mm-hmm. uh, Eddie Johnson. Johnson. Eddie Johnson. Recently, mm-hmm. I was there with him. We took pictures, and so and he he was actually recently on NBC. But I'm proud to say that before he got to NBC and met some of this big shot. I, I, you know, get, got him on my platform about two or three occasions mm-hmm. because I believe, and he was not the only kid. There's another kid that I did that for, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, I can't, and sometimes I talk about parent, parenthood, mm-hmm. you know, how parents are coping with their kids, you know, the challenges of parenthood. And um, there, are other, there are other people that I have, you know, shown I mean, showcased uh, on my show that I'm, I'm forgetting. But well, okay, now let's uh, <laughs> let's return to the um, uh-huh. community uh, entertainment. Mm-hmm. Uh, what what is the problem that uh, something that you believe has to be resolved now? Uh, within within the community at large. What do you feel? Mm. What I feel, mm-hmm. I think that what has to be resolved now, you know, is is um the development of the south side providing jobs on the south side i live on the south side and i see the plight of people regular people and people i mean the perception um on the south side is oh is you know violence and all that and i actually did two shows on the south side i i called it the south side my the goal of that show is to highlight the positives of the south side because it's not all about the negatives mm-hmm. and i've what i've noticed is that it's um, 99.999 percent of, of the people are regular people who are trying to make ends meet mm-hmm. what you know you know and they, they just don't have the opportunity they don't have the jobs they don't have if they have jobs i think a lot of them would put down the violence because i'm i literally talk to this you know, people you know and because i live there and you can tell young kids are frustrated they're doing what they're doing because of lack of resources, resources. Mm-hmm. And so, one, two, I also see um, that 
deep deep separation of the black community okay black community from what black community also the african dia- the african community also the yeah, black community community in the diaspora which is the africans caribbeans and african americans mm-hmm. deep deep disparity it's like it's like two three separate worlds but if they were to join together what could you do uh so my goal is the for the, after for in this 400th year and in the year of return i feel like um the people of the african community or the african or the black community i mean i can use african and black interchangeably, interchangeably right because it's almost the same thing but people prefer to use it uh, you know uh, one one word pr- you know to the other based on what i you know how they feel i think that after 400 years of people who used to be together who used to have peace if we have been separated this far i mean this long and we find ourselves in the diaspora in this 400 year if we don't do anything at all we have to at least come together and acknowledge that we're not that different you know that we have one heritage and so again we don't have to all live in the same community all of a sudden you know at my china chinatown if you go to chinatown it's all kinds of people from the asian co- asian mm-hmm. continent who live there right. that's beautiful you see so uh, but uh if uh even even uh east africans do that uh, no, uh, the Arab community do that. You know, the Arab community do that. If you go to Devon, you know, you have Ubekistanis, Ube- Pakistanis, mm-hmm. you know, Indians. Um, we just don't have that. The black community don't don't have that. Because of a geography or because of a cultural clash? At, at, yeah, cultural clash, history, again, more so slavery. You know. So, so the three groups, mm-hmm. are you saying that the three th- groups don't get along? We, we, we don't, we don't, we don't seem, we... You may see glimpses of these two communities getting along in uh, social gatherings or at events because there are several events that bring these people together. But if you go in the com- apart from the parties, we don't we don't necessarily even acknowledge the fact that we want we belong to one heritage. We don't acknowledge that. Okay, so because I- I'm from the African community, and mm-hmm. I can tell you for a fact that I, just just to break this point. There are people in the African community, in the Ghanaian community, who think that the African Americans are this separate group of people who are this people. The Caribbean don't even think of the African people like they are Africans and they are co- they're connected to them. The, Af- the Caribbeans think they are Caribbeans. I'm from Jamaica. I'm from Barbados. Mm-hmm. I'm from here, Trinidad. Mm-hmm. And and if you're an African, you're talking to them. Oh, where are you from? Oh, you're from Ghana. Oh, okay. How is Ghana? How is Africa? Okay, and they, they, you know, they relate to you or relate to each other as though there's no commonality, but there is. So that's my goal. Again, I'm not saying that we have to all of a sudden come live together in one community, but at least let's come together and recognize that after 400 years, we are a people. Let's remember our oneness. We are a people that has that have one heritage. We just got separated due to slavery and middle class separation, but we have to acknowledge that. Uh, our similarity and then we can begin the conversation of hey can we do business together okay if you're african-american and you have a store or if you're caribbean and you have a project and i'm as an african can i sit down with you and can we see how we can put a store together and something that we can do in collaboration for the benefit of the entire society now of course what our businesses and our endeavors is not only to benefit the african or the black community but whatever we come up with because we're joining our forces can become big where it's not only for us but you know I- anything that you big you know spirals right if it's big then when facebook came up with facebook it's benefiting the whole world so i'm thinking you know, if if I can partner with another guy who is from you know the, uh, in the black community and we can come up with a big idea, it's not pr- when progressive mind show becomes big. It's not only go- it's not only going to be for Africans, because the things that I talk about. I had the CEO of Devon Bank on my show. Mm-hmm. I spoke to the vice president of BBB Better Business Bureau. I had them all on the same platform. Mm-hmm. Okay. I had the this owner of the Mera restaurant. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, no, a, a, a diamond restaurant. The Ethiopian restaurant. Ethiopian no. diamond? Yeah, oh, Almas. Yeah, they were our friends. Yeah, Almas was on my show. Oh, Almas. Okay. I, I, one thing I didn't tell you, I promote b- uh, local businesses. I have a forum on my show called the Business Promotion Forum mm-hmm. where all I do is just promoting local businesses. 
let's I just bring them on. Oh. So we're not supposed to promote any businesses and WCRD. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay, right. but but I'm not promoting <laughs> them. I just <laughs> said no, that I promote. Yeah, it's okay. just like uh, 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 at least uh, mm. they were on your show. Yeah, they were on my show. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. So like uh, that's why I said that. So that's why I used I, that's uh, another segment that I have on my show, and I, there was, there's another seg- segment that I called uh, uh, legend legendary leaders. I mm-hmm. focus, you know, on an, I pick a legendary leader, and we talk about their impact, their leadership, and whatnot, mm-hmm. all over the world. Mm-hmm. So. And this can be bigger if I can partner with someone who okay. I can assimilate with. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So, yes. so that's all I'm saying. You know, mm-hmm. the the recognizing of the fact that we are one people is very, very key in this moment, in this year in particular. Mm-hmm. So, coming to answer your question directly, uh, this uh, things that I feel uh, can be done to help the black community. Mm-hmm. Right, because uh, you will have uh, uh, three like brothers that we mm-hmm. have been separated coming back together. And then uh, working together. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. It would be powerful, wouldn't it be? Absolutely. Okay. The third uh, ascertainment is uh, uh, concerns. Mm-hmm. What What are the long-term uh, problems that uh, that need to be addressed? Um, One problem. <laughs> In the in most important in the communities. Yes, and, and what what mm-hmm. you feel? What I feel? Yes. Um, um long term problem i feel um where do i i think um the youth has to be uh that's a i think the youth ha you know they have to be empowered be more uh i think we have to pay attention to their youth a lot because i feel like um more often than not they are left in their own world to you know they need direction is what you yeah mean. i mean they, they need direction and there has to be more coordination of you know the of adults and the youth you know um that they are not you know just a separate entity on their own i know parents are doing their best you know but and uh, and parents are you know awesome but i feel like maybe if you can do more in that direction because they have the power they have the strength you know and so um and, and the parents need support as well. Oh yeah, the parents need support. Actually, yeah, parent parenthood. I think parents need a lot of support. Oh, one thing, I, one big thing on my heart: teachers. Mm-hmm. Are teachers, teachers have to be taken care of, like, like just like doctors and nurses will be taken care of. Mm-hmm. I believe strongly believe that, and I'm not just saying it because I'm here. I actually did a show on my show. Mm-hmm. I did a whole segment on my show called the teacher. You know, my goal is my goal was to highlight their importance in every sphere of our life you know the uh, so did you bring on uh teachers yes on your show? yeah yeah i brought teachers on my show and i actually brought the communication director of um the uh, i i do so a lot of these things i've forgotten their name but yeah uh she was one direct she, she's big on t- on the teachers thing i think i have the flyer but i can i can get come up with the name later but yes, okay. i have teachers on my show and we spoke about their plight, you know, and the what? their plight, their mm-hmm. their conditions, and what what should be done. So my thing is, teachers, youth, you know, and parenthood, you know, like um, because I think these are the core of our society, and these are the core um, segments of our existence as humans. Mm-hmm. You know, the youth. If they have, if they have the right direction, they can channel their energies and their power the right way. Mm-hmm. But if they don't, if they don't have it, then of course they're gonna lo- miss their way. And by the time they realize they have to come back on the track, on the right track, you know, a lot of years may have been wasted, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, as early as we can, you know, harness their talent and youth. I mean, t- their talent and and uh, skill set and energy and put them on the right path it helps secondly if teachers are taken care of well they will provide the youth and the kids and everybody else um the right tools knowledge and wisdom and servitude you know to become better people in our communities and parents parenthood you know i believe in if a woman can let's say mo- excuse me mothers you know when they, you know in this country there's no maternity leave like that you know once uh, there's you know it, uh, you can be home for three months after having a baby in, in Ghana is is, is huge you, you give you maternity leave but I notice that it's not here all I'm saying is if parents can be given more help you know uh, because parents need time with their kids you know and so parenthood 
youth and teachers are some of the big things that I feel uh, our society should focus on on helping, uh, giving help, providing help for. Thank you so much for mm -hmm. that. What about your progressive mindset show? Mm -hmm. What is the next step for it now? So because of um, uh, some of the things that I was like I said, I was I had to put a show on hold of the station that I was on the WGAC station because there were a lot of factors that was that were prohibiting me to progress the way that I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, what, mm -hmm. what is your next step? Then? So my next step now, so so I so it's on hold. My next step is to build a bigger platform, right? That would enhance or if you know that would enhance me to impact the way that I want to because my show was impacting. Uh, even all the way in Africa, people will call me from Africa and tell me how they are learning uh, positive things and the way things are done in America. Because you see, the kids back home, the youth back home, have to understand how the systems work in America, so that they can have a better understanding of how they can hold politicians and leaders back home accountable to their roles and functionalities as leaders. Mm -hmm. And as it is, the mindset and the concept between leaders and citizens back home it's not the best we kind of like hail our leaders and our politicians as though they are tin gods and don't necessarily hold them accountable even though we're paying taxes to them mm -hmm. and so what i was doing was to enlighten some of the youth to, to understand the importance of politics importance of engaging in your community and also importance of how things the reason why we want to come to america is because it's developed and it is not it wasn't it's not developed because Things were just done anyhow, but systems were put in place and the systems are being implemented and supervised, right? Communities are maintained uh, by leaders who promise or who deliver on their promises before they get into office and when they are in office. But not enough on the south side. Well, 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 I think that, no, I'll just make a reference to Ghana and here. Mm -hmm. Not enough of the south side. Well, you know, we, there are problems. Mm -hmm. Some of the leaders are doing well for the south side. They mean well, but maybe they don't have the support, maybe. Mm -hmm. But all I'm saying is that my show was impacting back home based of, you know, the knowledge that I was sending to them to understand that we got to hold our politicians accountable so they can implement, so they can provide for us you know, uh, rather than us just healing them and, and just seeing them as guards. Mm -hmm. And then, so, I want to build a, a bigger platform that can enable me to impact the way I was and even better, you know. And that's, so, I'm taking my time to do that. My goal to be on, be on, to be, uh, on the air, I mean, my goal to have a show, let me, let me retry and say it this way. I don't want to be on air just because of. If I wanted to be, if I just wanted to have a show, there were all options, a lot of options. When I, I left the station where I was in May, and people kept calling me and telling me, "Go here, go there. You know, you have the chance to do this. You can. You, you don't have." But I understand the importance of what I'm doing, and I understand that people like what I'm doing. But I want to take my time and get the right structure, get the right platform. And get the right resources because yeah, yeah. because I wasn't getting resources. I was I was funding everything by myself. Okay. Anybody that came on my show was for free. I took a, I did not take a dime from anybody, mm -hmm. and so it was I was you know it was putting me in a, a tight financial constraint, right? So this time when I come back, I want to get the right support, the right platform, so I can impact. The reason why again I haven't gone to any other radio station is because I'm not doing this for me. And so I just don't want to. I'm not. I don't want to be out there just beyond. So just, 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 just so I want to be on air. Uh, as long as I am on the right path to preparing the platform that can impact, you know, the way that I want to, it's fine. I'm going to come back on air. It's going to be very soon. The community is going to hear about it. Uh, but uh, for now, I am working on the exchange event. Yes, I wanted to get to that. Yes. Which will p which will be the next thing after that? I will be on air soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talk about the exchange and how that's funded. How did it begin? Again, so the exchange is not funded by anybody. It's me. It's just me. Um, everything has always been me because it's difficult getting help from people, um, especially if you are new and you have a d and if you have a different concept. I mean, new concept. Mm -hmm. uh, also, if your concept and what you're doing, your project is not about party, you know, because when it's a party, everybody wants to come and have fun, so people pay money and give you money whatnot. Um, so it's been difficult funding, um, but I've been trying to do that on my own. The exchange is, as I said earlier, 
is um, a name that I came about uh, with the help of Dr. Frazier of St. Paul, okay, he's at St. Paul Community Church. Um, it is bringing Caribbeans, Africans, Caribbeans, and African Americans together after 400 years to remember our oneness. Mm-hmm. And that's what the exchange is. So it's going to be an exchange of what we now have that we had lost after 400, uh, 400 years bef- prior. We're coming back to exchange that, mm-hmm. which will symbolize our oneness going forward. And so we want to encourage. And then the exchange too is, uh, one of the concepts of the exchange is that we want to be able to embrace, understand, and accept even the differences that we have acquired after 400 years of separation. So it's, it's, it's mainly that. And it's, it's, you know, we want to sensitize the community, the African, the black diaspora, okay, yeah. or the African diaspora, that it's okay that we have what well, we have, our traditions and our customs and our way of lives, but it's also very pertinent and important that if we ought to grow as a community and be more meaning and be more impactful, okay, and be more beneficial to the bigger society, there's a need for us to collaborate or at least understand our our heritage, our our oneness, so that we don't necessarily have to see each other in a negative light. Because if we have if we can connect here mentally okay we can we can we can embark on bigger projects that will not will not only benefit us but that will be a beneficial to the a bigger society so um that is the essence of the um the so exchange what are the activities then and when is it and where uh, it, it is going to be at the dusabo museum mm-hmm. dusabo museum of african american uh, african american uh, s- history uh it is si- is right there by uh, the address is 7040 East 57th, 56th Street. Uh, you can't miss it. If you Google Dusabo, it's, you, you, you're going to see it. Uh, on the 16th of November, again, the time is from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Um, we're going to have food and drinks served at uh, 5 p.m. That's going to be recept- I mean, gonna be that kind of interaction um, between 5 to 6. 6 p.m., the ceremony kicks in. We're going to be awarding and recognizing significant people who have shown tremendous um, progress, who have made tremendous progress and had impact on the black, in the black diaspora, Mm -hmm. uh, and who have also promoted the cause of humanity with their work. Um, People like Martin International, of uh, the guy who organizes Africa Fest of Life. Um, and the Chicago Jack Fest, I think, um, um, that is his event. He also is the one that owns Chicago Music Awards. Um, he's going to be honored. We're going to be honoring, uh, you know, Wild Hair, the owners of Wild Hair, the reggae club. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're coming. We're going to be honoring them too. And, um, Dr. Margaret King of, uh, Chicago State University. We're going to be honoring um, the little kid that I talked about, the the, 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 the kid, that, the boxer, yes. the sixth sixth time national champion. Mm-hmm. He's coming. Uh, we What's his, are, name? his name is jo- Jojo, Jojo uh, Joseph Awinyonga. That's his full name. Mm-hmm. I already called him Jojo. Um, the uh, 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 your friend. You know, mm-hmm. we yes, we yes. we're going to be uh, you know recognizing especially, mm-hmm. uh, and of course the owner of the mirror too, and then. Um, who else? The Secretary of State, Jesse White, uh, is going to come. Uh, as he's coming, we're honoring him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we're honoring, um, who else are we honoring? Um, uh, I'm, the names, I, I can pull up the flyer now. Um, so, oh, do you have it? We can yeah. put it under the air. Okay, I do have the flyer here, the hard copy here. Mm-hmm. Uh, There's the new one that we just made. Um, and I want to be able to share it okay so we are honoring uh what's his name uh mr akotobeko who is the owner of spectrum um spectrum newspaper um also oh patrick wuta um i, I don't know if you heard about africa africa international house okay no. he's the ceo and president of africa international house is that a uh, 
Is it's a not-for-profit organization. Okay. He is the one that does the Africa Festival of Arts, mm -hmm. uh, which is also in Hyde Park, and and we have and we are honoring um, Perry Emma, who is the president of the museum, the Dusabo Museum, and uh, these are the significant people. Um, we we have the our guest speaker who is in the person of Dr. Um, Melida Harris Barrow. She's coming all the way from Panama, mm -hmm. you know. So, and this are we ha we also have some honorees who we haven't confirmed yet, um, but they are going to be very powerful people in that room. Dr. Dion Lopez is also going to be there representing the Caribbean community. Um, we we have um, there's going to be a cultural fashion show. Uh, there's going to be a play, a short play uh, on 1619 Project, uh, A Journey of a People. 1619? 1619, yes. Mm -hmm. A Journey of a People. That's the name of the play. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not going to have the full play because of time. Uh, we're going to have uh, a good portion of it. Mm -hmm. uh, Ted Williams is the one. It's, it's a Ted Williams production uh, uh, play. And he is going to be helping with that, you know, bringing his students and his group to perform. Um, there's going to be a port. A poem um and there's going to also be a cultural dance african cultural dance there's going to be caribbean dance too it's going to be a, a beautiful evening mm -hmm. so yeah how could uh people register to attend uh so it's on facebook if you if you go on facebook and you type the exchange um uh, sorry about that um if you type the exchange on facebook let me put my phone off if you type the exchange unifying the black diaspora uh you should see it uh the exchange Unifying the black, uh, let me see here. It says unifying uh, the black diaspora for future generations. Okay. How much does it cost? Forty-five dollars. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. Please go on Facebook now. Type the exchange unifying the black di diaspora for future generations, and uh, and you know you see it. Uh, you see, and then it's also yeah, it's right there. Um, the if you go on my my. Uh, Instagram page, it will be the Progressive Mind Show. Okay, the Progressive Minds Show. Uh, that is the Facebook. Uh, That's the Instagram um, page. Now, uh, the website. For, okay. okay. For the mm -hmm. exchange event, mm -hmm. if people are not able to attend, mm -hmm. will you have it recorded so that people could uh, access the footage and and watch it? Absolutely, yes. It will be recorded. Um, so we are we are we're hoping that uh, we'll have no. We have we're going to have media. I mean, video coverage and all that. We're also hoping that we get some big big media platforms, media houses to come and cover it. But we definitely it's going to be yeah, it's still definitely going to be covered, and it's going to be um, you know made public for anyone to see it. But if you're interested and you, you think that forty five dollars would be too much for you, uh, reach out to me on Facebook. Um, if you go to the exchange page, you can send me an email or send me an email to info.progressiveminds at gmail.com. Info.progressiveminds at gmail.com. You can also ring my Google phone number, which is 312-690-3624. Okay. Personally, you can reach me at 815-409-9123. Well, thank you so much, Senna mm -hmm. Alinko, yes. for joining us on Wizard today. We're so glad to have you here, and uh, m much luck to you and your future Progressive Minds show and the exchange event. Thank you so much for your time, and thanks for the opportunity. Thanks to, uh, thanks to your audience for uh, having the time to listen to me, and we're looking forward to working together for the betterment of our society. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. This is the Wizard at WZ.